This is Surgication, surgical education for parents. We are here to inform, inspire, connect, and heal. Addiction. Surgication, Episode 8. Dr. Alicia Peterson, Director of Chronic Pain Program, Children's National Hospital. Hi, welcome to another episode of Surgication. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Petrosian. As many of you know, addiction is a big topic in the, not only in the healthcare industry, but everywhere in the world. And today I've privileged to have Dr. Alicia Peterson. She is a director of chronic pain program in our children's hospital. And I invited her to talk to us about addiction. Yes. Welcome to Surgication. Thank you. Hello, Surgication family. I'm absolutely thrilled to be back again to discuss this critical topic of addiction. And it's an issue that's top of mind for many families. This is incredibly timely. Thank you for the invitation. All right. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to just fire those questions. So Dr. Peterson, uh, what is exactly addiction? And uh, briefly, if you don't mind, I know it's a big topic yeah. and we can go on for hours, talk about it. Uh, why don't you tell us what addiction is and to those parents who, who are struggling to understand? Yep. Addiction is a mental illness, and it occurs when a person finds the effects of a substance or behavior so gratifying that they develop cravings. And they ultimately do everything they can to satisfy those cravings, including neglecting themselves, neglecting their family members, and this can have this does have negative consequences. Why don't we talk about addiction in realm of surgery? And the, I guess my three questions to you would be, what's the difference between opioid use, the opioid misuse, as well as opioid disorder? I know there's some differences and similarities and, and can be confusing. Absolutely. And it's really key that we get our terminology right here. So opioid use, and I will say medical opioid use, is when... A medical professional prescribes an opioid to a person for a specific medical purpose. The example I'll give here is post-operative pain. Having surgery, pain is expected to be severe for the first few days, in which case it's appropriate to use the opioid for that pain. Once the pain subsides, the opioid use should stop. So that's medical opioid use. Opioid misuse is when a person takes a prescribed medication in a way that is not intended by the medical professional. So using that same example of postoperative pain, the person took opioids for that postoperative pain. The pain had went away from the surgery, but they continue to take the opioid now to treat their emotional pain. Let's say they're taking it for anxiety or for depression. So that is opioid misuse. Opioid use disorder is opioid misuse, but also now the person has developed cravings and have neglected themselves and others to obtain the opioid. And so we can see things such as not engaging with family and friends, not participating in activities they previously enjoyed, not sleeping, not eating. There's clear functional impairment and emotional distress from the use. So that's opioid use disorder. Going back to what, what's currently in the news, how big are these problems specifically in this country? Oh, boy. It is definitely an issue. And there's a reason why it's, it's top of mind for everybody. And so the Clinical Journal of Pain 2019, the Groenwall paper, discusses how particularly when we look at opioid misuse, 3.6% of the population of children ages 12 to 17, that comes out to be a little over 800,000 kids have misused opioids. Again, used opioids in a way that it wasn't originally intended to be used. And what's really unique about what this paper outlines is that when you look at these 800,000 kids, they divided them amongst two groups. One is the self-treaters and the other is self-seekers. And it's important to determine which one of the two groups the child is in because the way they are treated is different. The self-treater is a patient 
who is taking the opioid to treat a different kind of pain. Uh, Oftentimes there's comorbid anxiety and depression versus the sensation seekers. These teenagers are using the opioid for its euphoric effect. They want to get high. Uh, They may also be rebellious engage in other high-risk behaviors. They might also use other substances like alcohol or smoke cigarettes. For the self-treater, because we definitely want to treat opioid misuse, we want to prevent that transition from misusing prescription opioids to opioid use disorder. For the self-treaters, the way to address this group would be to connect them with the appropriate outpatient medical team to address their care, to address their pain, have them evaluated and provide the appropriate therapies. That tends to be what should be effective in addressing opioid misuse within the self-treater group. For the sensation seekers, this would be a little bit different. They may require more intensive therapies to address the high-risk behavior as well as provide treatment for comorbid substance substance use, if it's alcohol or cigarettes, for example. And so I liked that they made that distinguished distinguish between the two groups and provided the ways those are treated. Now, I talked about, okay, well, we want to prevent misuse from turning into opioid use disorder. How severe is opioid use disorder? Out of the age group between that 12 to 17 years of age, a little over 150,000 for opioid use disorder. And over 99% of those who have opioid use disorder, it's from prescription opioids. Uh, Less than 1% was due to heroin. And so it's a big deal that we look at the way we're using and the way we're prescribing prescription opioids. So I think as a physician, we all have, as a physicians, we have to be careful how much medication we prescribe and what we prescribe. And another question to follow that would be, if I do get a lot of questions asked by parents, what if my child takes the prescription medications now? Mm -hmm. Will this child be later at the risk of developing an opioid, whether it's misuse or addiction? Right. And the answer to that is a resounding no. Appropriate use of the prescription opioid. Appropriate meaning providing the child the opioid as it was prescribed for its intended use will not lead to or make the child vulnerable to developing opioid use disorder. So that is the very, very good news. There's no need to worry there. But here's the caveat. Most of the time when we prescribe opioids, families don't use it. The problem is they don't discard it either. So there is prescription opioids just sitting in medicine cabinets across the country that is not secured. Has anyone actually looked at why prescription medications that were prescribed were not appropriately given to the child? Has anyone actually went back and said, because they're afraid of giving opioids or they just don't feel like the child's in pain, so they're under pain? Right, right, okay. And so, um, and that's why there's leftovers, right? Majority of the time, one, it's, it's a twofold factor. One is, is that medical providers over prescribe the amount of opioids required for the condition that they want to treat. Secondly, uh, parents, some are reluctant, give it very sparingly. Uh, others find that it's just not required, uh, but they hold on to the medication just in case. So the opioid is just sitting in these medicine cabinets. And uh, the Journal of Addiction has found that one in three teenagers who have non-medical opioid use and transitioned to heroin, they got their exposure through the leftover opioids in these medicine cabinets, either from their family or that of a friend's. I, I think if you do a survey, a lot of us will have some sort of old <laughs> medications laying somewhere on a corner of the medicine cabinet that no one's used and right so no those have got th- to I go agree. we have so, to get rid of them so coming back to that question how do you properly discard opioids given to kids that haven't been used and has been sitting in the cabinet for a while yes the way you get rid of it take it out of the bottle combine it with coffee grounds kitty litter an undesirable substance 
put it in a bag, seal it, and throw it in the garbage. Do not throw it down the toilet. That compromises our water integrity. Do not bring it back to the medical professional that prescribed it. We cannot accept it. And pharmacies often don't accept the medications either. So taking it out of the bottle, putting it in a sealed bag with something undesirable and throwing it away is the most efficient way to do so. Okay, so we have the answer that giving mm-hmm. opioids to kids after c- certain procedures or some mm-hmm. pain uh, doesn't let them abuse opioid in later in life. Right. So what actually does if not yeah. the previous medications or some exposure in their lifetime? Yes. Do we know why they get addicted or why do they... This so why do they misuse opioids? Right. This question was looked at in uh, JAMA Pediatrics very recently, December 2020. And they found that what, predis- what renders a child vulnerable to developing opioid use disorder is actually childhood tobacco use and chronic depression. The good news is that both of these can be treated. Uh, the health survey on drug use and health found that parental use of opioids in a non-medical fashion, so a parent who has an opioid use disorder, that renders a child vulnerable to developing it as well. So it is necessary for parents who have this problem to seek help because it does affect the child too. Um, So for families who have kids that struggle with the opioid misuse or abuse, what do you tell them? Who do you, who do you have to call? Is there a place, special number they have to call yes. and, and get guidance or yes. Uh, assistance? Yes. Thankfully, help is readily available. Uh, SAM HSA, so it stands for Substance Abuse Mental Health Service Administration, provides a free, confidential, 24-hour, seven-day-a-week hotline at the phone number 1-800-662-HELP. They also offer this in Spanish and English. If you go to their website, samhsa.gov, they also provide online resources for families as well. And with this being the nationwide problem that it is, you're not alone if you have this problem and help is available. So the, the bottom line and the take-home message for parents would be just because you've given opioid medications, it's okay, it's okay to give it to a child after a certain procedure or for pain. Your child will not be addicted. Right. There's other reasons why your kids get addicted. If, there is, if you have a child that struggles or your family that struggles with opioid misuse or abuse, there's always a help available with the number that you provided. Well, thank you very much. It was great having you inform us about the uh, addiction and hopefully we'll see you soon all right thanks very much thank you very much great